Welcome back to another week of Calvary's Love Church Online, and we're so happy that you're with us. This really is one of our uh, favorite days of the week because we get to hang with all of you. We get to spend time in the Word and in prayer, and what can be uh, better than that? You know, I think about a lot of you that have been faithful, connecting with us every single week at Sea Love Church Online. Uh, I think about my friends Jody and Luke Shaw, and uh, just this past week hearing from you about how much the prayer services impacted your week. I uh, think about some friends, John and Sue Schultz, uh, who first connected with us through our online services and then started to attend our live services at our Johnson City location and just got involved to serve in ministry. Uh, I think about some friends, um, Donna and Pat Palma from New Jersey, and uh, just wanted to let you guys know that we're praying for you, uh, Pat, with the loss of your mother. Uh, we're praying for you guys, but we're so happy that you've been able to join with us every single week for our online services. And you know, this really is the Sea Love family. And uh, whether you're with us at a live location or you're with us online, you're part of our family. We care about you, we love you, and we're so happy that you're connecting with us. Uh, we're gonna be getting ready to go into the Word today. We're actually gonna be diving right into the Word. And um, our lead pastor, Pastor Jerry, has a word for us today. We're picking up week two of our It's Our Time series that we just kicked off last week. And uh, we believe that it's our time to pray and seek God. And we're going to give us some time for that after the message today uh, to just really press in and pray and seek God. So why don't we just pray right now and just pray as we get our hearts ready to go into the word and just believe that God's going to speak to us. God, we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you that you're always speaking. God, I think about your word that says, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Just last week, we talked about hearing you, God. We talked about hearing the truth of the reality of where things are in our world and what's happening around us, God. And, and Lord, that, that moves us to begin to pray when we hear that truth. But God, I thank you, God, that we would just be able to hear your word today and not only hear the truth of what's happening in our world, but, but God, to hear what you're saying. And God, I believe that you've put a, a message in the heart of our lead pastor that, Lord, will impact our week, God, that will change our perspectives, God, that will empower us to live on mission for you. So, God, may we not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word, and we're so excited, God, for what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the message. Good morning, Calvary's Love Online Church. I am so delighted to be with you this morning, and I'm so happy that you have tuned in to part two of our three-week series entitled, It's Our Time. And the beauty of that is that we have connected fasting and prayer together for 21 days. I hope, if you have, I hope you're involved in that as well. And if you haven't already started, it's never too late. You can jump in and get started. Because if there was ever a time that the church needs to pray and fast, it certainly is in the time that we live. So this morning, as we go to part two of It's Our Time, and back to the story of Nehemiah, let me read a few verses in Nehemiah chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It says, In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands, listen to my cry, listen to my prayer, look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have 
sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, the decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Verse 8, please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back, hallelujah, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. O Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. What a story. And last week, as Pastor Jared was unpacking the first part of this story, I'm going to move on to another part. And actually, my subject this morning is humility. Now, I know you're excited about that word humility, but I want to tell you something. It's not an easy subject, but I promise you, it is a God subject, humility. My first point, my first thought this morning is simply bad news. What do you mean, Pastor? You know, bad news is hard to process, and bad news is hard to deal with. It's hard to navigate bad news. It's a, it's a challenge to overcome bad news when it comes our way. Bad news will take us outside of our comfort zone. Bad news will reveal our spiritual character. If you think you're strong, let's see how you respond when you get bad news. You know why? Bad news is bad news. And there's nothing encouraging about it. It's bad. It must be dealt with, though. And how we deal with it determines the outcome. Put that down in your notes. Put that in the, in the chat line. How we deal with bad news determines the outcome. And you know what? Usually, the last thing we feel like doing when we receive bad news, in those moments, usually, it is not humbling ourselves in order to set up the best possible outcome. Because our flesh has a way of trying to take over. And so usually... Humility is not something that we think about when we just received bad news. Bad news is part of life. Bad news is something you have to deal with and I have to deal with it. Every person has to deal with bad news. My second thought this morning uh, is the right attitude. Put that in the chat line. The right attitude. How many know that a lot of things have to do with our attitude? And you know what? Nehemiah had the right attitude attitude even as he received the bad news. The right attitude. Nehemiah didn't go into attack mode like maybe you and I feel like doing sometimes. Nehemiah didn't give up and walk away just because it was such a devastating news. He didn't allow his emotions to rule his actions. I hope you remember that this morning. We're not guided and led by our emotions. Or we shouldn't be. It, he didn't allow them, his emotions to, to rule his actions. You know what he did? He took responsibility for himself and his family by admitting their own sins. He became part of the solution and not part of the problem. He trusted God to bring restoration and healing to the people. Did he know how God was going to do it? No, he didn't know that. But that's where you trust God because we live by faith. We walk by faith. We speak by faith. We pray by faith. And so that's exactly what he did. He also volunteered, volunteered to lead the people in the process of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and restoring their dignity. He wasn't recruited. He volunteered. You know why he volunteered? He was so moved in his spirit. He was so disturbed that these things were happening 
to the people of God and to the walls of Jerusalem. And he was so moved. Are, are we moved by what's happening in our nation today? Are we so disturbed by it that we find ourselves sitting down and, and weeping and crying out to God? Why? Because the right attitude is going to push us in that direction. My, my last thought this morning, because we're keeping these, these messages short so that we can engage in prayer, and we're going to have some of that with you as well, but my last thought this morning is Nehemiah's humility. It all happened because of Nehemiah's humility. And if you're taking notes this morning, I want you to write this down. Humility is at the root of unity. We can't have unity without being a humble person. We can't work together as a team without humility. We can't unite for a project or unite for a purpose that God has without humility. And you know the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, look what it says. If my people who are called by my name will what? Humble themselves. Put that in the chat line. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, says, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. And look what else he says, and heal their land. Oh my goodness, does America ever need healing? America is bleeding. America is hemorrhaging from all of this chaos and all of this discouragement and all these crazy things and all of these wrong attitudes and bad attitudes. You know, bad news is one thing. I'll take bad news anytime over a bad attitude. But I tell you what, we're going to humble ourselves during these 21 days of praying and fasting and seeking God. And something miraculous is going to happen. Nehemiah's humility is what brought unity with the people. If God can use the king of Persia, a pagan king, for his purpose. I believe that he will surely help the people of God, like you and like me, to humble ourselves and accomplish his purpose during this time that we live in. Because these are crucial times. These are critical times. It's no time to, to have an attitude. It's time to get on our faces before God. It's time to fast. It's time to unite our hearts together and believe God for miracles to take place. America needs a miracle. America needs a miracle. You see, nothing that the enemy used to come against Nehemiah and the Israelites, nothing that they used to come against them hindered them from accomplishing the purpose of rebuilding the wall. Why? Because they humble themselves in the sight of God. And because of that humility, they united their efforts together. And because of that, the power of God had surrounded them. And many, opposition, many things came against them. Lots of opposition was coming against them. And they were ready to face any opposition. Why? Because they were humbling themselves and they were uniting themselves. And I believe that God was leading Nehemiah and all of the people. Hallelujah. We need to humble ourselves, my friends, in the presence of Almighty God and move toward the purpose that He has for us. It's our time. Put that in the chat line. It's our time. It's our time to seek God. It's our time to do with, with our lives as God says to do. It's our time to walk in humility. Let me say a few more things about humility before we close. Humility takes ownership. Nehemiah didn't blame others for their sins. He didn't point the finger at others. No, he took ownership of his own sin. Humility dies to the flesh. I'm sure that Nehemiah's flesh felt like just staying in the palace and not getting involved. 
But the Spirit of God in him could not let him remain where he was. It called him to action. And I pray that God is calling you and I to action this morning as we go down this path of believing God to rebuild our country, rebuild the people of God, rebuild those that are, that are torn down, and to watch Him draw others coming in. Humility is total surrender. God, if I can help in this crisis, I'm available. Are you saying to the Lord, God, use my life however you choose during this time? I don't know what to do. I don't know what I, what I can, how I can help. But God, I think you know how I can help. And just use my life. You see, humility acknowledges, I can't do it, but God can. Hallelujah. Put it in your chat line. God can, but God can. Hallelujah. You see, humility looks for a godly way to respond in an ungodly situation. Let me say that again. Humility looks for a godly way to respond to an ungodly situation. Humility believes in obedience. Humility re requires integrity. But let me show you some of the benefits of humility. Humility changes lives. Humility pleases God. And humility positions us for the miraculous to happen. Somebody say amen. The miraculous to happen. Church, let me say to you this morning, we serve the God of another chance. Amen? We serve the God. Maybe we blew it yesterday, but today is a new day. And we serve a God of another chance. Church, we serve a loving and forgiving God. And we serve a God who enables us to humble ourselves for the sake of unity and for the sake of progress and for the sake of the plan and the purposes of God. I believe, church, that we can rise above the doubts. We can rise above the confusion. We can rise above all of the questions that aren't answered yet. How, pastor? With the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do it. God is calling us to cry out for our nation. Cry out for our president and our leaders in this country. Cry out for our community. To cry out for our church and our families in the name of Jesus. Let me remind you of Nehemiah of verse one and uh, I mean chapter one and verse eleven. Let's read it one more time. O oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Yes. There are still those of us who delight in honoring God. Can you put it in the chat line? I'm one of those, Pastor. I'm one of those that delights in honoring God. I believe God is calling us to stand in the gap during this time, to hold up an, a standard before this world, and to declare His provision and His protection and His process in this chaotic in this very confused world. Listen, we're going to pray with you right now, and there's more prayer to follow this. I hope that you connect with each one that comes and prays with us in just a moment, but let me pray with you about this word. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the powerful, anointed, strong word of God that is declared to us every time we pick up the word and we begin to read. I thank you that this church is uniting and connecting and humbling ourselves and going forth in unity, Jesus. I thank you for this morning, and I thank you for those that will be leading us in prayer. God, help us all to engage throughout this morning together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's our time for humility. What a great message from our lead pastor, Pastor Jerry. And you know, the gospel says that we are not able to save ourselves. The heart of the gospel is really that we're willing to admit that we need a savior, that we can't figure out our own lives, that we can't really like sort out all the issues that we're having, that we can't really fix the problems that we're seeing in front of us, but thankfully, we know someone who can, and his name is Jesus. 
You know, in the story that Pastor was speaking from in Nehemiah, Nehemiah had to be willing to go to the king and admit that he really didn't have the resources that he needed to be able to accomplish what he had before him. And really, that's a picture of us in coming to Christ and saying, man, I don't have what it takes for this life and what I'm facing and what I'm going through and in my family and, and everything in our world around us. And I need something outside of myself to give me that hope and to give me the ability to move forward in life. And really Jesus is the one that makes that possible. Just like the king provided all the resources uh, to Nehemiah, um, Jesus, when we come to him, he, he provides all the resources that we need. And maybe you listened to that message today and you thought like, man, I really need that. I really need Jesus Christ to provide for me what I, what I can't provide for myself. I need a savior. And you know, if we're willing to say that, then it requires humility. It requires us to humble ourselves before God and say, I need you, Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you've never told Jesus Christ that you need him to be your savior. I just wanna go ahead and before we go any further with the service and before we go into our first prayer topic, I just wanna go ahead and take a moment and I wanna pray with you. If that's you and, and you desire for Jesus Christ to be your savior, he loves you so much that he laid his life down for you so that you could have life. And he's here today, right now, in your home, in your car, wherever you may be, and he's here to meet with you, and he's here to give you life. So if you wanna receive him as your savior, just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, thank you so much for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for giving your life. And I desire to give you my life. I wanna humble myself before you and admit that I need you to be my savior. Forgive me of my sins and make me part of your family. In Jesus name, amen. I just wanna go ahead and just celebrate right now. If you prayed that prayer, that is the greatest decision that you could ever make in your entire life. All of the Calvary's of leadership, all of our pastors, all of our leaders, all of us right now, we're celebrating with you because this is the greatest thing that you could ever do. And as we go into our first prayer topic, we're gonna to give you just a couple of minutes to pray into this. You know, we don't just need the gospel if we don't know Christ. We need the gospel every single day. We need to remember that every day, we, it's within us to want to just take things into our own hands. I don't know if, if you're like me, maybe you fall into that trap where you just start to take things on yourself. And you're like, all right, I gotta figure this out. I gotta do this. I gotta take care of this. I gotta fix this. And you know, if Nehemiah had done that in the story, he never would have accomplished the task of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. It was, it was him humbling himself and going, man, I can't do this and I don't have the answers. And it's not just in coming to Christ that we admit that we need to humble ourselves, but it's every day. You know, my, my grandfather uh, from Holland, he was a world evangelist and church planter, and he communicated the gospel all over the world. And he encouraged me with this. He said, Jared, he said, Humble yourself before the Lord every day because it's within every man to exalt himself. And I think that's so true. I think that sometimes we can fall into this trap of self-exaltation or of just, you know, doing things in our own strength. And so for our first prayer topic today, we're going to just take some time and we're just going to ask God to forgive us for trying to do things in our own strength. And we're gonna just take some time in prayer. We're gonna ask God, Lord, help me to humble myself before you. Help me to be dependent on you. Help me to turn my heart toward you and really admit that I need you. I need you today. I need you more than ever. And if there was ever a time that we needed to admit our dependency on Jesus Christ, it's now. So take a couple minutes in prayer on that. And uh, then one of our pastors and leaders will be leading us in prayer. Thank you. 
What's up, Calvary's Love Church? We're gonna pray in just a few moments uh, and ask the Lord to forgive us for uh, our dependency upon ourselves versus the work of what Jesus did on the cross. You know, I can tell you that growing up as a as a child and growing up in a Christian home, uh, this is something that I have fallen prey to personally because you've heard the story of the gospel so many times that sometimes you can feel like you get it, you understand it, um, and you can become almost... Um, uh, 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 complacent in it. And so we're just going to pray against that spirit of complacency that rises up in us, um, that spirit of uh, the, the, the self-dependency. And we so forget how desperately we need the, the spirit of God to um, bring us to uh, the wisdom that we need, to the power that we need. And that all happens at the work at the cross that Jesus did. If Jesus needed the presence of God, the Spirit of God, uh, the Holy Spirit to empower him, we need to be dependent upon the Spirit of God and the Holy Spirit in our life and the work uh, of the gospel on the cross and what, and what Jesus did for us. So let's pray. God, we believe right now, and Father, we just ask specifically for uh, repentance, God, that you would forgive us, Father, for operating in our own strength. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful with what you did at the cross, Lord. You gave us access to an inheritance. Lord, you created a relationship. You created a bridge between us and God the Father where we no longer are enemies, but Father, we are called sons and daughters because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. So that means that when we're going through things in our life and we truly pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, when we are sons and daughters of the Most High God because of the work of the gospel in our life and our dependency upon him and our obedience to the gospel, Lord, we are disciples of you and we have the ability to claim our daily bread each day. You call us to pray for that and we can be dependent upon you, Lord, to give us what we need each day. And so, Father, I just pray that we would be a people that are dependent upon the work of the cross, Father, that you did. Lord, that we would be dependent upon, Father, you and your mission. Lord, that we would truly be disciples of you, Jesus, and that we would realize, Father, that what you did is the greatest miracle of all, the work at the cross, Father. Lord, that you fulfilled and, and made new each covenant that was broken, that man broke many covenants, Father, and you restored every single covenant that man broke, Father. And we just thank you for that. We thank you that you did that, Jesus. And I pray, Father, maybe there's someone here listening for the first time that's never accepted Jesus. God, I pray that you'd speak to them right now. Lord, I pray, Father, for the Christian that that maybe is, is has fallen away and has become uh, uh, obsessed with things of this world or idolizing things of this world versus putting their trust and their dependency upon you, Jesus. Lord, we return to you. And Lord, you say that if we return to you, that you return to us. Lord, you say that you are slow to anger and that you are quick, Father. You are quick to restoration. And so we just ask that you would restore us. You would make us whole. And Father, as we pray and fast, we are dependent upon you, Jesus, and the work that you did at the cross for our emotional healing, our spiritual healing, our physical healing, God. In Jesus' name, amen. For our next prayer topic, we're going to actually take some time and we're going to thank God. You know, we can ask God for a lot of things, but it's good to just stop once in a while and begin to just thank God. And you know, there's something really powerful that we want to teach you during this time. Maybe this is something that you already practice regularly, and so you're just going to dive right into this and, and just be ready to go. But maybe this is something new to you. And it's this idea that we can actually pray scripture. You know, the scripture is God's word. And so there's really nothing more powerful for us to declare in prayer than the word of God. We're actually speaking from our mouth the very words that God has already spoken. And there's power in that. And so we just want to take a scripture and we want to begin to just pray through this and use the scripture to thank God because all of his promises are yes and amen. And so his word does not return void. And so we're going to actually just declare his word through prayer and I'm going to take a minute and just show you what that looks like. I want you, if you have your mobile device or maybe you're watching this service on your device and you can kind of go back and forth, uh, but I want you to just turn to Philippians 4, 19, Philippians 4, 19, and I'm actually looking at it from the NLT, the New Living Translation, if you want to get in the same translation as me. And what we're going to do is we're going to just take a scripture, I'm going to break it into three parts, and we're going to pray this scripture. And so the, the scripture says, Philippians 4.19, it says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs 
from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And so I'm going to break this into three parts. And this same God who takes care of me, that's going to be our first part of our prayer time. And so this is what that might look like. We take that part of the scripture, we look at it. Look, you can pray with your eyes open. God's okay with that. All right. And so we're going to look at the scripture. I'm going to read that first part. And this same God who takes care of me. All right. Now I'm just going to pray that. God, thank you that you take care of me. God, thank you that you take care of all of my needs. God, thank you that you, and I might close my eyes, I might keep them open, doesn't matter, but I'm just praying that part of the scripture. God, thank you that you take care of me. You take care of my family. You take care of my children. You take care of my finances. You take care of my emotional health. You take care of my mental health. God, thank you that you're taking care of me even when I don't know you're taking care of me. And so that's how you would pray that part of the scripture. After you've done that for a little bit, then you read the next part of the scripture. It says, will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. So now I'm just going to begin to pray that. God, thank you that you supply not just some of my needs, but all of my needs. And you're supplying all of my needs from your glorious riches, meaning that heaven is just poured out into my lap. Like everything that there is in this world on heaven and on earth, it belongs to you, God. And you're supplying my needs from the place of wealth that goes beyond this world. I mean, come on. The streets are paved in gold in heaven. There's nothing God doesn't have. There's nothing he can't provide for us. And so, God, thank you that you're supplying all of my needs from your glorious riches. God, even the needs I don't know I have, you're supplying them. And you pray into that a little bit. Then we're going to take the third part of the scripture, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to pray to that. God, I thank you that it's been given to me in Christ Jesus. God, these things that you have for me, these resources, these things that you know that I need, God, in my, in my life, God, they're already given to me in Christ Jesus. Because I've turned my life over to you, because I belong to you, they're mine because I am in Christ. I am in Christ Jesus. And so I'm just going to take this scripture and I'm going to declare it and thank God and declare the scripture through my prayer. And so I'm just going to read it to you one more time. Philippians 4.19 And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. I want you to take some time right now as a family or individual, wherever you might be, I want you to just begin to thank God through the word of God and pray the scripture over yourself, over your family. There's great power in it.
Hi, this is Pastor Esther. You just prayed through that scripture. Isn't it so powerful to pray the word? And we want to continue to do that as we give him thanks for his provision and favor. Lord, we are utterly dependent on you. We come to you humbly, but with boldness. Lord, I thank you for the example that Nehemiah came to his king and received favor and provision. Lord, we come to you as the king of kings, O oh Lord. We thank you that you have made every provision through the cross of Christ and through your work on the cross, Lord. You have promised to provide all our needs according to your riches and glory. So we give you thanks, Lord, for your provision. We thank you for giving us favor and we thank you that we can come to you with boldness, Lord, because of what you have done for us. We give you thanks. Thanks and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. For our last prayer topic today, we're going to pray for our nation and our leaders, specifically our leaders in our nation. Uh, you know, in the story in Nehemiah, it's amazing because God actually uses the king of Persia, King Artaxerxes, to show the heart of God. And that, that like really blows our mind as, as Pastor was just sharing. Uh, this message today and just looking at the fact that God uses an ungodly evil king to actually showcase what the heart of God looks like and that all of the needs and resources that the people in Jerusalem needed to rebuild the walls were provided through this king and because Nehemiah was willing to go to the king he was able to get all of those resources you now we just spent our last prayer topic just thanking God that he is supplying our needs and for this next one, we want to pray for the leaders of our nation. And I talked about that, about King Artaxerxes, and reminded you of that to just build your faith to know that no matter who is in power, God is in control. And God can even use a leader that's in power that maybe we don't agree with, that maybe we didn't vote for, that maybe we don't want in office, or maybe we're against. But God can use that leader in a profound way because he is sovereignly in control even of the world and even over every world power. And you know, there's something that the Word of God says in more than one place about the fact that we need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for those in government. We need to pray for them even when we don't agree with them. And so here's some things you might be praying during this prayer time. God, I pray that you reveal your love to our leaders. God, I pray that the gospel that you've shown me and the grace you've shown me, I pray you show that to our leaders. God, I pray that you give our leaders wisdom on how to lead our nation. God, I pray that you bring our leaders to a place of repentance and turning their hearts and their lives to you. So you might just take some time right now and just lift up the leaders in our nation. And I just believe that God's gonna build your faith and build your heart to know that God is able to use anyone that's in power for his purposes and for his glory. Let's, let's go ahead and pray.
Hey, Calvary's love, I want to join together in prayer for our nation and for our leaders. You know, in several places all through the word, we're encouraged to pray for all of our authority. And as believers, we can make petitions before God and requests and intercessions and prayer. And so in this time, our nation, our president, um, those that are running in the election, they need our intercession. And we're going to join together with that. You know, when I do that and I feel sometimes like things are overwhelming or hopeless, it really encourages me to remember the position that we come to in prayer when we are praying. And Ephesians 1 um, lays that out so beautifully and reminds us that we're seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. And there, where we're seated with him, it says it's far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And that he, Jesus, put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Would you join me in prayer? God, I thank you that we can come to you on behalf of our country, that we can come to you on behalf of our leaders, that we can come to you in the time of great division and pain and confusion, that we can come to you, Lord, and lift up, Lord, these um, painful places of injustice, of racism, these painful places, Lord God, um, of fear and worry about the election, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are seated on the throne, high above every ruler, every president, every nation, and that your position does not shift with circumstances, but it remains in authority, that you are literally leading the way for the work of your kingdom to take place. Lord, we pray for President Trump and for the First Lady as they've been diagnosed with coronavirus. And we pray for healing for their bodies. We thank you that you will strengthen them in this season. Lord, we pray for former Vice President Joe Biden. And we ask that you would do a work in his life, in his heart, in this season. We ask that you would do a work in the hearts, Lord, of President Trump and of every leader in our state, of our governor, Lord, in our senators. God, that we can lift them before your throne and we can ask, Lord, that this would be a time of no matter what is happening with circumstances, Lord, that your kingdom will come and your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. And we know that your heart, Lord, is for harvest, for lives to come to know you, for people to be rescued and healed and set free. And we pray that in the midst of much darkness and brokenness, that there would be the light of Jesus Christ that shines brightly, that people would be drawn to you and find hope and healing here. I thank you that you are at work in the midst of all of these things and that nothing, nothing escapes your throne. We trust your authority. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your place in our lives, in our church, in our community, Lord God, in our state and in our country. And together as your people, we lift it up to you and we ask that your kingdom come, your will be done. We thank you for this, God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, if you hung with us to the end, We just want to say thank you. You know, sometimes we can be so hungry for information, but not as hungry to actually respond. And you know, in our online services, we didn't want to just be giving you something to listen to, but we wanted to create some moments where we could actually pray together. Um, And we just want to thank you for taking the time to do that with your family, with your friends, and uh, just encourage you that, you know, there is so many more people that need this message today. Uh, Think about a friend or someone that you know that maybe would be impacted through this service and go ahead and just share it with them. Share the link with them. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can share it. And let's get this message out to as many people as possible. You know, we want to thank you for just continuing to support the ministry of Calvary's love. It's because of your support that we're able to put these messages out and that we're able to impact so many people all around the world. And we believe that we're just getting started. You know, we like to say that we're just getting started because there are so many more people that are going to be reached uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no greater message than the good news of the gospel, and that's what God's called us uh, to give our lives to, and you're part of that. So thank you. It's our time. 
week two, we just finished week two, and we're gonna be going into week three next week, so make sure that you don't miss next week. Come back and join us again for another incredible service. Maybe get on social media, post a scripture, post a prayer. Let's just flood social media that's filled with all kinds of negative messages. Let's flood it with powerful messages. Let's put up prayers and let's put up scriptures and let's just hashtag that. Hashtag it's our time. Go ahead and do that and uh, just get the message out there to more people. We love you. Can't wait to join with you next week. See you soon.